Do you think the U.S. government interventionist policies are protecting our freedom or are they paving the way for economic disaster? Good evening, folks, and welcome back to another episode of Silver Dad Knows. Remember, always live with no edits. If this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button now as you're going to like what I'm about to say. So, yes, check it out right here to my right, and I am presenting to you a 2005 gold Philharmonic. Now, it shocks me how so many people do not own even fractions of gold. Gold has been traded since the beginning of time, since the biblical days, and today it is up like never before. And it's going to continue to go up because our dollars are going to continue to devalue. Um, gold investors quickly point to the Austrian Philharmonic when it comes to pieces that are not only beautiful, but reliable. And uh, right here, uh, we are actually looking at the reverse, presenting several uh, classic music instruments, uh, including four violins, a cello, Vienna horn, bassoon, and a harp. Then you go to the reverse, I'm sorry, the obverse, my favorite, showcasing a pipe organ. This design is credited to Thomas uh, uh, Pessen, uh, Pessendorfer, I always have issues saying his name, uh, Thomas Pessendorfer, and has appeared on the Averse every um, every time for these Philharmonics. You know, it's, this is just how they always look. They got that classic, uh, that classic look. You know, you go back to its origins, it does not change. And I don't blame them. You know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Currently, I am seeing these 2005 editions as low as $2,500. It's not a little bit of money. Imagine, I'm holding this in my hand. It's $2,500 right here. At the minimum. At the minimum. What's what's uh spot right now for gold? Is it $2,460? $2,470? So, yeah, I mean, if I'm going to sell that, which I'm not going to sell it. Uh, if I had to sell it, if I was forced to sell it, I needed the money. I ain't taking anything lower than $2,500 right now in real time. So again, for people who don't have any type of gold, even fractions of gold, you're highly doing yourself a disservice. Get your hands on gold ASAP. Silver needs to be the priority because it's so affordable and you want to have stacks of it. But get a little bit of gold. At least a little bit. When I say a little bit, 5 to 10 ounces. I know that's, that's a hefty amount of uh, capital, but... Ease into it. Buy, buy what you can every single year. The pervasive control of the deep state and its influence over government institutions persists as the U.S. government's hyper-interventionist policy, foreign policy, has not only led to widespread global military presence, but has also raised serious concerns about the sustainability of the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. The reliance on the dollar has long allowed the U.S. to evade the full consequences of its aggressive policies. However, confidence in the dollar is waning as more countries begin to challenge its dominance, signaling a shift in the global economic landscape. Dr. Ron Paul, which we all know him, a former congressman and well-known advocate for peaceful foreign policies, noted that the U.S. government's approach to foreign interventions is only framed as necessary uh, difference rather than outright aggression, leading many Americans to accept these actions without question. This narrative is uh, consistently pushed forward with countries like Iran, China, and Russia being labeled as threats, thereby justifying military spending and interventionist policies. The U.S. has managed to sustain decades of misleading the public to garner support for its wars. Dr. Paul has pointed that much of the American public remains unaware of the true motives behind these interventions, often because of the propaganda um, disseminated by the government and mainstream media. The misinterpretation of facts prevents the public from understanding the broader implications of such actions and keeps them aligned with the government's narrative. That's exactly what they want. Moreover, the U.S. government continues to prioritize military and industrial spending at the expense of domestic needs and individual 
uh, freedoms. This unchecked spending and interventionism not only strains the economy, but also threatens the foundational liberties that our nation was built upon. This prevailing system, sustained by lies and fear-mongering, has made it difficult for the public to recognize the dangers of this approach. People are often too scared or too misinformed to challenge the status quo, which allows the government to continue its interventionist policies without uh, significant opposition. Dr. Paul argues that the key to addressing these issues lies in education and that a well-informed public is crucial for challenging the current system and advocating for a foreign uh, policy rooted in peace and prosperity. The importance of homeschooling, which I'm going to homeschool my children, and alternative education methods is a way to counter the propaganda taught in government schools. By educating the younger generation about the true cost of inter interventionism and the value of individual liberty, there is hope for a future where the U.S. can adopt a more peaceful and sustainable approach to foreign relations. A significant shift in both policy and public perception is needed to prevent the decline of the U.S. economy and the erosion of civil liberties. This shift is particularly important now as the global confidence in the U.S. dollar declines, making investments in assets like silver more critical for safeguarding wealth in these uncertain times. So right here to my left, I'm going to present another coin um, that is immensely important to me for obvious reasons. Don't tread on me. Money Metals Exchange commissioned these beautiful one-ounce silver don't tread on me coins or rounds, not only to provide a tool for citizens to protect against the collapse of the dollar's purchasing power, but to help reinvigorate the very symbols of liberty upon which this nation was founded. These symbols are not to be denigrated um, and demonized as the highest levels of our political class are now doing. Instead, they must be renewed and passed on to the new generations who want the Founding Fathers' principles in modern-day America, and they very well should want those principles. It's in their best interest. In 1754, Benjamin Franklin uh, first popularized the rattlesnake as a symbol of uh, national unity during the French and Indian War. By 1774, it had become the uh, formal, formal symbol of the Freedom Revolution when Paul Revere added it to the uh, masthead of his newspaper, the Massachusetts Spy, and allowed the snake, uh, showing the snake, fighting a British imperial dragon. In 1775, um, uh, Continental Colonel Christopher Gadsden, which we all know him, incorporated a coiled rattlesnake with 13 rattles, symbolizing, of course, the colonies. Above the motto, don't tread on me, on an early American flag. So this goes back, this goes back a quarter of a millennium ago. Think about that. Over 250 years ago. This is not a new symbol. So when people are like, oh, it's a racist symbol, that's no. They're misinformed. They're not patriots. And they simply, uh, they simply just say whatever CNN, MSNBC is, is telling them. That is their education. Not history, not books, not actual written history, just people's opinions. Don't go based off people's opinions. Go based off facts. Go based off what has worked in the past. Gold and silver, since the beginning of time, has always worked. And right now, gold and silver is working. <laughs> it's crazy. The dollar's decline is an example of why Gold is going to continue to skyrocket, and silver is going to continue to skyrocket. Bitcoin and a lot of other um, currencies, they're going to skyrocket because the dollar is going to go down. Get yourself in order. Get your finances in order. Get your household in order. Folks, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Silver Dad Knows. God bless you. God bless your household. And God bless America.